This chapter is designed to show you some of your options when wanting to create simple off-the-shelf objects. Now, by off-the-shelf, I'm referring to something that's basically pre-made. Any two- or three-dimensional figure that can easily be created by simply clicking and dragging with your mouse. This video in particular will deal with creating three-dimensional standard primitives. A primitive, as you may remember from maybe a high school geometry class, is simply a basic building shape, like a box, a cylinder, or a sphere. Now, inasmuch as primitive shapes are typically very basic, that doesn't mean that primitive objects don't serve a very important purpose, as those simple shapes can be combined together to make something much more detailed. So, for example, a pencil can be constructed by simply adding together a couple cylinders, a couple torus, and a cone or two. It's that easy. Single primitive shapes can also be used as a starting point to build something much more complex. By sculpting the shape of that primitive using a handful of various modeling techniques that you'll learn over the course of this fundamentals title. So don't underestimate or in any way downplay the importance of getting the most out of your primitive objects. When you learn how to harness the power of their various controls and settings, you'll quickly begin to appreciate just how valuable they indeed are. Let's start by looking at the box. We'll activate our top view, then over on the right, we'll go into the command panel. Under the Crate tab, you'll find the box at the top of the left-hand row. Let's now return to our top view. With the mouse down, we'll then drag diagonally to the lower right-hand corner. Now when you draw, pay particular attention to the location of the two red sticks in the middle of the box. Try to center those sticks directly in line with the crosshair on the grid. That'll ensure that our object will be smack dab in the middle of our 3D space. What we're controlling at this point is two of the three dimensions on our box. When happy with the shape so far, let go of your left mouse. Then, focus your attention in the front-hand view. As you push up with your mouse, you're controlling the height of the box. Let's make that height about one inch, we'll then left-click to finish up the command. Back in the command panel, take note that the box button is still active. To get out of the command, let's now right-click in any of our views. OK, so we can now make a few adjustments on our box. Back in the command panel, we'll activate the Modify column. After doing so, we'll center our object with the shift Control z shortcut. Back in the right, about halfway down, you'll find a category called Parameters. These are the settings on the box that can be adjusted, so we can control the length, width, and height, and the number of segments, the number of lines that run in any of three directions. Entering values to make adjustments can be done in a couple different ways. You can either highlight the value field, type in the number then press enter, or simply utilize the spinner that you see to the right of the value field itself. Those spinners are the little up and down arrows that you see. Let's see what adjusting the length does. So I can return my box after making adjustments to its original size, I'm going to hold down my left mouse button and right click to cancel each command. Let's now adjust both the width and the height and see what those do. So each value changes the look of the object in a particular direction. Before adjusting any of the segment spinners, let's take our perspective view to shade edge mode by typing F4. Now you're going to want to make sure that viewport's active before hitting that key. OK, let's now experiment with changing the number of segments in each direction. Here's the length, the width, and the height. Let's now go ahead and delete our box and recenter our views with the Shift Control Z shortcut. Let's return to the top view and make another box, pretty much the same way. Now this brings something up that you want to make sure to always keep in mind. You'll notice that this newly created box has the same number of segments as the last box we created. The reason for that is, we're still working in the same file, and in doing so, Max has maintained that memory of our original box. Once the program is reset, each and every one of Max's values returns to its default setting. In our situation here, we can reduce the number of segments in each direction by simply right-clicking on the appropriate spinner. Do that for all length, width, and height segments. With right-clicking on a spinner, always returning a given setting to its lowest possible value, take note that the fewest number of segments a box can have in any one given direction is one. Let's also delete this one and recenter our views. Now in the Creation Method category, take note that there's a couple different ways that you can make a box. One of them is called Box, and one of the settings is called Cube. Let's change that option over to Cube and we'll make one in the top view. This time we'll start in the middle of the window, hold our mouse down, and drag out. Now once you've got that on the screen, let's go ahead and center things again with Control shift z 
The difference between the box option and the cube option is the cube makes each of our sides the same size. Let's delete that and try one more option. This time around, directly under Creation Method, you see a category called Keyboard Entry. Go ahead and open that up. To do so, you can either click on the plus sign or directly on the name. Drop down to the length and type in 50 and press Enter. Now because we still have things being set to create a cube, you'll notice that both the width and height also changed. Here's how this works. Directly below those values, click on the button that says Create. This automatically creates the object at a predetermined location in the scene. That location being determined by the X, Y, and Z values you see in Keyboard Entry. OK, enough with working with a box. Let's try a sphere. Found in the left-hand column, second one down, we'll activate the Sphere command, then make one in the middle of our top view. Put your mouse in the middle of the window, hold down your left mouse button, then drag diagonally back to you. When you're happy with the size that you've created, go ahead and let go of the mouse. Let's again center our windows. OK, back in the command panel so we can make some adjustments. We can adjust the radius, the number of segments, and a setting called Hemisphere. As you adjust the Hemisphere number, take note of what's happening inside your scene. The bottom of the ball is being cut off. In essence, giving you the opportunity of creating maybe the shape of a dome. Let's take the Hemisphere value back to zero. Below Hemisphere, you'll find a command called Slice On. Go ahead and check that checkbox. You can now adjust both the Slice From and Slice To values. This gives you the opportunity of cutting the sphere into a smaller piece. Making it look for an example like a piece of fruit, either a slice of apple or a piece of orange. Let's go ahead and delete that and we'll see what's up with the cylinder. Again, we'll make our object at the crosshairs in the top view. Now this time, when you hold down your mouse, drag to the side diagonally. This controls the bottom radius for your cylinder. When you're happy with that size, let go of the mouse and again turn your attention to the front view. As you push your mouse up, you're controlling the height of the cylinder. I'm going to push mine upwards about an inch, then click to complete the command. Let's now center things up and return to the Modify column. On the cylinder, you've got controls for both the radius and the width. Try those. The horizontal lines that you see inside the cylinder can be controlled by the height segments. The cap segments, if looking in the top view, will create some additional lines that you can see there. And the number of sides can be adjusted to control just how smooth or how coarse the object is going around. Right-clicking on that spinner will take it down to the fewest number of sides, which is 3. Try that, then increase that value. You again see the Slice On option that's going to be available with all of Max's primitives. Now, something that I want to mention here that's important to remember. Let's activate our front view, roll our wheel back to zoom back a ways, and make a second cylinder. What I want you to notice is the difference in the way things lie in the perspective view. You see, the viewport you create something in makes a difference as it controls the original orientation of that object in the scene. So having been made in the top view, that cylinder stands straight up and down. The one we created in the front lies on its side. Hit shift Control z so you can see that in all four windows. Let's go ahead and select both objects using the Control a shortcut and we'll hit Delete. Now let's go back and center our views. This time around, we'll create a torus. Let's do that in the left view. We'll start in the middle of the viewport, then drag away to the outside. When you like the size of how far around it goes, let go of the mouse and pull back in. Once happy with the size of the hole, go ahead and left click. Notice because we made the torus in the left hand view, it stands on edge, making it look like a candidate we could use for a tire on a sand buggy. Let's go ahead and delete that and instead make it in the top view. Take a look at the difference. That tire for our sand buggy is now laying flat on its side, making it look more like a donut or bagel. It could also be used as maybe an inner tube for that little river rafting trip we've got coming up next week. Let's go to the Modify column and see what we can change. Adjust both the Radius 1 and Radius 2 settings. Radius 1 controls the size of the hole. Radius 2 controls just how thick or thin the object becomes. You can also adjust the number of segments and the number of sides to control the smoothness or coarseness of the geometry. Try that. Take the number of sides down to 4 and we'll experiment with both the rotation and the twist.
rotation will basically turn the surface inside out. While twist will do just that, twisting the surface as it travels from one end to the other. Let's go ahead and delete that and see what else we have to choose from. Over at the top of the right hand column, you've got the cone. Let's make that in the top view. Again, we'll start in the middle of the view, hold down our mouse, and drag back diagonally. This will form the bottom radius on our object. When you're happy with that size, let go of your mouse and start looking in your front view. Pushing the mouse up will then control the cone's height. Now, when you're happy with the height, click again. Now, we're not done with the command. Now, you'll want to diagonally either push away or pull back to control the top. There you go. Once happy with that, click one last time with the left mouse to complete the command. Let's resize our screens and scoot on back to the Modify column. Radius 1 will control the bottom of your cone. Adjust that. Radius 2 works on the top side of the cone. Now, here's something we haven't talked about yet. Values can easily be cut and paste from one field to another. Highlight the value for radius 1 and right click. When the options come up, up at the top, choose Copy. Let's now highlight the radius 2 value, right click again, this time choosing Paste. Now, you're going to want to press Enter to lock that in. So, take a look at that. Very quickly and easily, we were able to take the value from one setting and copy it over to another. Let's take the second radius value down to zero by right clicking on its spinner. Now we can adjust the remainder of the settings. The height, controlling the horizontal lines with height segments, controlling the number of segments in the top view with cap segments, and with being able to change the number of sides with the size setting. Now, as far as what this object could be used for in a scene, in its current shape, it could be a nose cone for a rocket, a TP for an Indian reservation, or maybe the lead at the front end of the pencil that I showed you a little earlier. If we reduce the radius 1 and increase the radius 2, we can create something like maybe a table or chair leg. Try that. So don't think that the cone has to have a tip at its top, because it doesn't. Let's delete that and go for something else. To the right of the Sphere command, you'll find another Sphere option called a Geosphere. To see the difference between the two, let's make them both in the top view. Now, notice how our top view has kind of a left and a right side. I'm going to start with a Sphere on the left-hand side. I'll now go back to the Geosphere, creating one of those on the right-hand side. OK, let's check things out in the front view. The biggest difference between the Sphere and the Geosphere is the layout of the lines. With the sphere, the one on the left, you see those lines are basically up and down and left and right. On the geosphere, the shape of the segments are pretty much in little triangles. So you can certainly use either of these to create a round object. Now, I gotta be honest with you, I don't use a whole lot of geospheres myself, but they certainly will have their time and place. As far as adjustments, you've got basically radius and segments. Try that. You can also change the design layout of the lines, choosing either Octa or Tetra. Let's go ahead and delete both those, and we'll try something else. This time in the right-hand column, let's go for the tube. Now the tube will basically look like a cylinder with a hole in the middle of it. Let's make that in the middle of our top view. When you click and diagonally drag back, you're basically setting the size of the hole. When you're happy with that size, let go and continue to drag in the same direction. This now controls the thickness of the walls of the tube. Let's keep them pretty thin, we'll let go of the mouse, we'll put our attention in the front view, and we'll push up. When you're happy with the height, go ahead and left click to again complete the command. Once you've done that, you can move back to the Modify column. For the settings, you've got Radius 1, which controls the size of the hole. Radius 2, which controls basically the thickness of the walls. Then you've got all the other standard settings like height, height segments, cap segments, and sides. Now, if you ever found a reason to make a box with a hole in the middle of it, use a tube and take the number of sides down to 4. And like all the other primitives, you've got your slice on options. OK, let's try something. We're going to delete this tube, then make another one in the left hand window. This time, in setting the height, give it a little extra length. 
Now I know it's shooting off the side of the screen, but that's okay. Once we center things up, we'll have a full view of what we're working on. Once you've completed making the object, go ahead and center things up. Now with the tube having been made in the left view, it takes on more of the look of maybe a sewer pipe. But watch this. We'll go to the Modify column and activate Slice On. Now let's type in some numbers. We'll take the Slice From to 270 and the Slice To to 90. Take a look at that. Now all of a sudden going to the skate park, we've got a half pipe for the skateboarders. Nailing it onto the roof of our house, we've got a rain gutter. Or taking it to the bowling alley, we've got a little channel that we can throw our ball into. Let's delete that and try something else. Staying in the right hand column, let's click on Pyramid and we'll head to the top view. Now we're going to want to create this just like a box, so start in the upper left hand area, then drag down to the lower right. Again, do your best to try to center those two red sticks. OK, now once you're happy with the size, go ahead and let go and again push up. Looking in the front view, we can now control the overall height of our pyramid. Go ahead and click, then center up with Shift Control Z. So a pyramid shape is just pretty much what you thought it looked like. We can change the dimensions on the bottom with the width and depth. Or make the pyramid shoot higher up in the sky or lower down by adjusting the height. One more time around, we'll delete this and recenter our screens. OK, the last one we're going to make is called a plane. It's drawn out like a box, but it doesn't have any height. So let's make one in the top view. Again, we'll go from upper left to lower right. Now that's pretty much it. When you're happy with your size, go ahead and let go and center things up. The plane has controls for changing both the length and width. Now planes are commonly used to create things like walls and floors. So there you go. From top to bottom, that'll do it for Max's standard primitives.